All right, welcome to another episode of Implant Pokemon. Uh, today's episode, I will actually be doing the commentary after the match. The commentary I recorded during the match uh, was a bit haphazard, and I didn't really care for it. So, I've got my Typhlosion Magnezone deck yet again, and I will be playing six corners again. Um... My opponent starts with a Verizion, which is the ideal starter for his deck, and I do get the first turn Pokemon Collector, which is ideal for my deck. Um, I'm very happy to be going first, uh, Verizion. If it does go first on the first turn, it's going to do double draw. On the second turn, it's going to be able to hit for 40, which uh, will be able to do some work on a Cleffa, for example, and on its third turn, if I haven't catchered it out, it's going to be doing 80, which can take out um, Cyndaquils, Magnemites, Magnetons, and uh, really wreak some havoc. So I'm very happy to go first and get the Pokemon Collector. Unfortunately, I don't have a Switch or any energy, so uh, I can't really play or use a Cleffa, um, but uh, maybe I use Cleffa too much as a crutch and... So we'll have to do it without Cleffa. So I drop two Cyndaquils, a Magnemite, and a Reshram, and pass my turn. And now my opponent, uh, going second, I guess, sort of gives him the advantage, because now he gets to select uh, which of his big attackers that he's going to use for the match. So in this case, I would imagine he's going to go for the Kiram and the Terrakion. They're going to be the most... The most deadly Pokemon against this deck. So he does his double draw, and I have a pretty decent hand here. I'm gonna Pokemon communicate out the Cyndaquil. Probably go for a Quilava. And I do, in fact, go for the Quilava. I see I've got two Magnezones and two Typhlosion Primes in my deck, and a Magneton, which is nice. So all of what I need to get this deck going is present and accounted for. So I evolve, and I'm going to go ahead and end here. Um, he did a Sharon and a double draw, and I'm going to take all of that away from him. So while end isn't usually that great on the first turn, in this case, um, I think it's a fair trade. So we get another handful of goodies, rare candy, plus power catcher. So I know most of my items are in my deck. I haven't seen a switch yet, which would be the only missing piece um, that I'm going to need here. So again, I whiff on an energy. And uh, so we're kind of off to a slow start. And this is what I've talked about before. Uh, Typhlosion Magnezone uh, can be clumsy. So here we see two turns and I really haven't done anything. So my opponent's going to go. And... I did end him into a collector, which he may have gotten with his five card draw on the last one. But in any case, I'm going to get to see what his strategy is going to be. So he's going to go for a Terrakion, a Kirim, and a Shaman. The Shaman's going to let him move energy around. Um, so at this point, um, I'm definitely in my mind thinking, all right, I'm going to have to one hit, KO, whatever has energy on it. And I do have... Um, I do have a Magnezone Prime, which can knock out all of these 130 HP basics uh, with Eviolite, as we see here. So I do have the Pokemon I need to win this match. I've just had kind of a bad start. So here we see him Leaf Wallop for 40. And so on his next turn, unless I do something, he's going to be able to Leaf Wallop for 80, which is really going to hurt. Play a Sage's Training, hoping to get some energy into the discard. Um, I do see a Typhlosion Prime, so I will have the turn 3 Typhlosion, and I've got an interesting decision to make. I have a hard time discarding Lightning Energy because uh, Magnezone needs a Lightning Energy to do its attack, but at the same time, at this point, it's not really going to be that helpful of a card. Pokemon Communication would have been a lot more helpful, but... I don't think I was really left with a choice, and even watching this in post, I don't think it was really the wrong decision. So I have an interesting, I still can't attack even on my third turn, which is definitely annoying. I have to decide uh, what I'm going to do here. I kind of committed to, let's see, 
Looks like I'm going to place it on the Cyndaquil to retreat it. I'm going to catch her to stall his big bad Terrakion with its four retreat. And it looks like I'm going to go ahead and rare candy into Typhlosion on my active. And I lay down another Cyndaquil just so I have access to that second Typhlosion Prime uh, later on in the game. So at this point, I'm probably going to have to go ahead and end my turn uh, for the third straight time without really doing much. So let's see, what is he going to do? So if I was going to do that, I might as well have just retreated the Cyndaquil in the first place and just used my attach on the Reshram, or used my afterburner on the Reshram. This was... Or maybe I'm thinking Typhlosion Prime as an attacker to try and slow his energy drops down. Um, I really wasn't left in a good situation in general, so we'll see how it plays out. I'm studying his field, trying to figure out where his energies are. He'll be able to do just 40 if my math is correct on the next turn. So he is going to play Shaman and we'll see where he drops his energy. So this is going to be his third turn. Not the worst start. So he's going to bring that a rainbow up to Terrakion, which will effectively act as a fighting and a grass, so he'll be able to revenge. And at this point, I am concerned he is going to catch her my Magnemite. So I see the plus power, and he's got to be hoping for another energy so he can do 100 damage. Yep, so there it is. On his third turn, he takes out the Typhlosion Prime that I worked so hard to build. So he's going to get the first prize, and if I'm honest, uh, my board position is, is pretty bad. Uh, I don't really have anything going here. So we're on turn four. He's got a Trakion fully set up, and I have um, three basics in a stage one and no energy in play. But I do play Poke Gear. Um, I did swap out my twins for Poke Gear. Just to have more consistency. And Twins was a dead card in my hand a lot. And I just... Well, look at this. So turn four, we're going to have two Typhlosion Primes. And... Uh, looks like and we have a couple of energy in hand. We know we've got one fire in the discard. Which is also a problem. Which means I can't blue flare still. Because I don't have enough fire in the discard pile. So, we're really off to a slow, clumsy start here. And I can't really attack. I don't have access to a catcher for some additional stall. And all I can do is outrage for 50 minus, let's see, 30 minus 20, 10. on there uh, but anyway yeah here I'm not really figuring out the math either because Eevee Light works better than it used to but now it heals 20 if you attack it rather than actually reducing what your attack does by 20 which is kind of messed up and dumb ah, so he is off to a great start and he has yet another catcher and he's going to continue to drag out my Typhlosion Primes so he junipers for a fresh hand of seven. And even though I just played this game, I honestly don't really remember the middle bits that well. I kind of remember having a bad start and I know how it ends, but I don't really know the path that we took to get there. So I top deck a Magnazone, which isn't that helpful. And now I have to figure out how to get the Typhlosion Prime out of the active. So, second Poke Gear saves us here just like the last one did, and that's why I really like that card. 
even better than twins in this deck. Even though I'm behind, I'd still rather have two Poke Gears than two twins, I think. Although I guess twins would have got me the rare candy to get the Magnezone. But this still isn't that bad. So I'm going to go ahead and end. And I believe I put my energy onto the Rush Ram. I kind of, yeah, I put the energy onto the Rush Ram. And, and now I get the rare candy Magnezone, which, if I'm honest, is really lucky. So, I, am, I now have access to Magnetic Draw, and I'm trying to decide if I should... Looks like I Magnetic Draw right away and not use the Super Rod. And I don't believe there is a switch in my discard. And I actually don't think there's really anything that I want in my discard. And I'm still in a rough spot. He, the, the catcher is really kind of ruining me here. His catcher, that is. So I see here... What did I look? So I'm going to use Super Rod. That's going to get my Lightning back into my deck, along with Typhlosion Prime and the Cyndaquil. And I didn't want to use it now, because I don't really want to... Man, I don't know why I did that. Okay. Because I wanted fire in my discard. I didn't want to have to be forced to super rod those back in my deck. So now I'm thinking I have to catch her. Just to continue to stall while I try and get set up. I afterburner yet again onto a Typhlosion. Okay, I see. So I'll be able to retreat, and I'm going to have a very, very damaged Typhlosion Prime with 110 damage on it. Uh, but I do see here that uh, I will be able to Blue Flare for the knockout. And I'm finally in a decent spot here. So I think that was the right play. I don't know why I didn't see it here. I'm glad uh, me about an hour ago did see the play. And we take our first prize. And now we have a Magnezone and two Typhlosion Primes. And a Juniper in our hand and a Catcher. So we're actually starting... We're in pretty good shape here. So he's going to use Energy Search, presumably to get a Water to put on his Kirim. I do like Energy Search in six corners. Um, your energy requirements are so specific and you run such a wide variety of them that I think um, it's actually for once a decent card in that specific deck. So he's going to go ahead and Charon again. I'm just looking at how I'm going to get myself five prizes. So I can see here he's got three Pokemon on his bench that are weak to fire, so that's three, but I'm not too certain how I'm going to get the other two. And at this point, I'm starting to realize that with all those Eevee lights, so he takes out a Typhlosion Prime for the second turn in a row. And I promote Reshram. And we'll be able to just go ahead and Blue Flare his Verizion, I imagine, um, or his Cobalion. And we'll ignore the Kyurem for now. It's still not set up and ready to Glaciate. And I'm not sure what I'm thinking here. Looking at it now, it seems like a pretty simple play. I must be deciding what I want to knock out. And... I think in a few moments I'm going to check his discard just to take a look at what energy he has. Cobalion has a 2 retreat cost. Verizion has a 1 retreat cost. Um... And if he doesn't have that many medals left in play, um, you know, his Cobalion might not be that useful. Um, but I honestly don't really think it matters at all. And in either case, neither one of them are going to help him anymore, and here I go. So I see a Grass and two Rainbow. Two Rainbow is good to know. That's going to come, it's going to be handy to know later on in the match. So I decide to just go ahead and take out the Cabalion. And at this point I should probably Juniper. And I'm going to Juniper before the Magnetic Draw, because I don't want to have to Juniper away things I'm going to need. 
So there's the switch and a pair of lightning energy. And finally, we see Cleffa about six turns too late. And the only real thing that we can do here is just go ahead and take a knockout and try and keep up on the prize race. I would have loved to take out the Kirim because that's where all of, his, all of his energy is. Unfortunately, I'm just not in a position to do that. So, we are back to four prizes apiece, and it is his move. And he's got a decent hand. He's going to junk arm away. Let's see what he's going to junk arm. So, a grass and a metal. Probably will not need those anymore. And I assume he's going to go for the energy search to get a water energy. And that's another reason energy search is actually not that bad, especially in a deck like five or six corners, because essentially you always have a way to get access to that specific energy you need. So in this case, he effectively got rid of grass and a metal to get a water. And we can see here he's got some fancy art energy as well. And he's going to go ahead and glaciate. Oh, and he gets a head on his super scoop up so he can pick up that shaman. And that kind of stinks for me because that was an easy prize that I had my eye on. And perhaps I should have taken out the shaman rather than the cobalion. And again, I'm stuck with a Teflosion Prime in the active spot. So this is something I'm pretty familiar with. Well, I guess here we go, Super Rod. So he could have put the Shaman back into his deck anyway, so it really probably didn't matter at all. I wish Super Rod uh, showed your opponents what you put back in your deck. The discard pile is public, so I should be able to see what he picks out of there. I don't know why it doesn't, but it's definitely annoying. So I do have a switch, thankfully. And that might be another change I make to the deck. Uh, I only have one switch in it, but fitting two stage two lines, uh, the Typhlosion line and the Magnezone line, really doesn't leave you a lot of room for fun cards like Switch. I would love a second one, but it's going to be tough to fit. So at this point, I do have three energy in play. There's one on Reshram. And there's two in Magnezone, so I do have the energy it's going to take to essentially clear his board of A, a Kirim with an Eviolite, and B, all of his energy, and finally take the prize lead. So I'm double checking his energy, and I'm pretty happy, so no shaman shenanigans, no nothing. I'm going to essentially clear his board. So I'm going to collect her for another Cyndaquil. I'm thinking he's going to take one out. I do know that I use Super Rod to put a Typhlosion, well, we can see the Typhlosion Prime right there, so I know I have one. And I can see a Rare Candy and a couple of Junk Arms, so I know that I have access to another Typhlosion Prime. So I will Magnetic Draw for one. And at this point I'm thinking I could Junk Arm Away, Magnum Light, and Magneton. They're not very helpful. Cleffa actually isn't very helpful either. A Switch would be helpful. A Catcher would be helpful. So I'd probably do the right thing here and just hang on to the Junk Arm. Use it when I need it. Just because it's in my hand, it doesn't mean I have to waste it right away. So, so long, Kiram. We finally got to take that thing out. Top deck, top deck, our prize cards a Quilava, and now we're winning. But I'm noticing that my deck is pretty puny. And I don't know if I'm going to hover over it, but I'm looking at it now and I can see that it's really small. So he just outrages for 40, which is, or 20, which is excellent. And at this point, I... A little stuck because I need a rare candy and I need a another Typhlosion so I can power up Magnezone for another another hit. 
and I'm kind of, even looking at it now, that's not really the best spot to be in. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in my hand I would have preferred early on. Uh, Magnemite, Cleffa, those would have been super helpful at the beginning of the game. Now they're just kind of clunking up my hand and stopping me from functioning, really. So we'll evolve the cool lava into the, from the Cyndaquil. I'm going to go ahead and junk arm for, I have no idea what. Nope, don't junk arm. Still thinking. How can I get a third energy into play? That's got to be what I'm thinking. Uh, there we go. So my deck has eight cards in it, and I need three prizes. And he has a lot of high hit point Pokemon. I can take out a Verizion easily. Reshram and Kyurem without a plus power uh, are going to be significantly more challenging. So I Junk Arm away a couple of things, probably so I can Magnetic Draw. But I don't want to use the Catcher because that's... The whole point of using Lost Burn is to take out Kiram, but I'm left with no choice. So now I am able to Magnetic Draw, and I'm, at this point I'm hoping. I know my deck is small. Uh, it took a lot of resources to take three prizes, and this is one of the few decks that can really dish out that kind of damage. So at this point, I think I've conceded to the fact that I am not going to be attacking this turn. Probably should have junk armed for the switch to take out the Verizion. Because my rush frame has enough damage, or does it? 60 times two, no, I couldn't have even taken out a Verizion with Outrage. So I'm going to get rid of the Juniper because my hand is so small, and Cleffa because it's useless. Now I go ahead and get the switch. Alrighty, so it all worked out in the end. Actually, Outrage does plus 20, so I will be able to Outrage for the knockout. And I'm not really sure what I'm hesitating. Six Corners usually plays for weakness, um, but in this case, there are a lot of Pokemon that are played that are weak to fire, so. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess, Typhlosion and Embor aren't really played all that much anymore. As we can see in this game, doing 120 damage. Um, doing 120 damage just isn't enough anymore. So here, I'm thinking, hmm, if only I could Outrage for the knockout. Five, six, seven, eight. I can Afterburner twice that it only puts me up to 100. If I was up to 110, I could just Outrage for the knockout. And that would put me ahead on my energy drops. Because I wouldn't be lost burning, but it just wasn't meant to be. So I get another Typhlosion Prime set up. Four cards, two prizes, and I honestly, I don't think I check my discard, but I think I'm out of junk arms. And I know I'm out of switches, and I don't remember if I, I think I used the plus power at the beginning as well. So really, uh, I'm grasping at straws. I honestly need luck to win. Four cards, two prizes, that's just such a big ask. So I'm just checking my damage to figure out what I want to Afterburner onto. And I think I just choose my Cyndaquil. Um, he's going to be able to knock it out anyway, so putting an extra damage counter on it probably doesn't matter. Cyndaquil has 60 hit points, so he's either going to do 40 or 60 to me with Kiram. Actually, he's not, because I'm just going to take it out. So three more energy into the Lost Zone. That means half of my energy is now in the Lost Zone, and I need one more prize to win this match. 
So there's a Sages. Four cards left. Sages will let me grab two of those, and all we can do is hope. So, he is now in trouble. Um, he needs four prizes, and there's really not a lot of easy prizes left. Um, Cyndaquil, I guess. Eh, Reshram's pretty damaged. So, we're going to see a junk arm out of my opponent. And so long. <laughs> so long, N and Collector. And yeah, the cards are too tightly spaced together to count my junk arms. So, plus power. Double plus power? I can't remember. No, just 30 damage. So I top deck a fire and not a lightning. A lightning, I win the game. I afterburner twice with a lightning and on Magnazone, and that's it. So long. So I sage and I realize something terrible. The game has glitched and I can't look at my final card. I can only look at two and one of them is stuck there it is one card so that's it I the game's glitched and there's nothing more that I can do here I honestly don't know what that last card is um, and I know it's probably not a junk arm and I know it ain't a lightning um, so that's kind of it for me uh, I can't I'm stuck I can't do anything um, if this had been a real match, I would have been able to grab that last card. He would have gone, passed, and that's it. I have no deck. Out, uh, I have no deck left, and that I lose. I decked myself out. So here I'm trying to tell my opponent I can't. I can't. I'm stuck. The game is glitched, and I can't draw my final card. Um, I don't really think he understands what I'm saying. I'm not really sure. And uh, essentially, for the next couple of minutes, I tell him. I can't do anything so I'm just gonna try and play out my last turn just to see what would happen for real no no reason all I can do is retreat Magnazone and lose and a few more things that happen while all this shenanigans is going on the game won't let me concede either I click on concede a couple of times and it won't let me it just doesn't do anything and then after I concede it won't let me end my turn. It won't let me actually do anything. So the only way I can actually give my opponent the win that he has deserved is to disconnect. So I do go ahead and tell him, hey, I have to disconnect. You've earned this victory and uh, really, really, really great game. This is one of the funnest games of Pokemon I've played in a long time. And uh, it's kind of silly that I decked myself out, but that's the way it goes sometimes. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video.